and tell somebody it's time to give God a praise. <laughs> and God bless you. I'm Pastor John Belser, First Baptist Church, Melrose Park, thanking you for joining us for our Wednesday noon Bible class for today, August the 10th, 2022. Thank you to all of you for your love, for your support, for your prayers, for your concerns, for our family, for our church family, for uh, sticking by one another as we have gone through the many things that have challenged us over these years but God bless you, God is delivering, God is making ways, and we thank God for his presence, his comfort, and for his power. I want to get right into the word today, if you will. Last week, we left off the foundation, at the end of the foundation of uh, the lesson for today and for the next uh, Wednesday or two, in which we're understanding the gifts of the Holy Spirit. and. 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verses 4 through 6. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Amen. And so we're understanding, and we're starting today with the listing of uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And in 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, Verses 8 through 11, Paul identifies those nine gifts of the Spirit. Starting at verse 8, he says, To one there is given through the Spirit, and this is the NIV version, but in the King James it says the word of wisdom. Uh, here is a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. Verse 10, to another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to another, still, the interpretation of tongues. Now, let me stop there because in verse 10, at the end of verse 10, he's talking about speaking in tongues. That's the term that we use, speaking in tongues or in other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. This is different from the day of Pentecost in which those 120 upon whom the Holy Ghost first fell in the upper room, they spoke in the languages, in other tongues, in other languages of people who lived on the earth in different nations. So they were addressing, and I, if I remember correctly, it was at least 18 or more different cultures, different races, different languages. But here, the Bible dis differentiates and speaks in different kinds of tongues and to another, the interpretation of tongues. There's always been a debate and a bit of tension. Uh, put a pen right here, I'll, I'll read verse 11 in a moment. Uh, there's always been a bit of tension in the church about whether or not tongue speaking is appropriate or tongue speaking is even necessary today. Tongue speaking is a gift of the Holy Spirit and nothing that the Holy Spirit does should ever be minimized or even uh, people should never even try to discard it or move it to the side because God is the God of this age. And if he did it for the first century church, it's still needed and necessary in its own way, maybe in a different context, but in its own way, it's still necessary for the 21st century church. Amen. 
And, and so we need to understand, this is what he's uh, sharing with us, that we are to value, to seek, and to utilize the gifts that the Holy Spirit bestows upon us because this comes directly from the throne room of God. Verse 11, all of these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. Now, it's interesting that uh, there are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, as I just shared with you from 1 Corinthians 12, but there are also nine fruit of the Spirit from Galatians, the fifth chapter, verses 22 and 23. The fruit of the Spirit is like many, many times people think, you know, I have some fruit of the Spirit and I don't have others. No, you, we are to have the fruit. It's, it's, if, if someone gave me an orange, I would enjoy the color of that orange. I would have to take the peel of that orange off. That's part of the fruit. I would have to divide the, the sections of that orange. Though That's the pulp, if you will. You have the juice, which belongs to the orange. The seeds are also a part of the orange. All of those different aspects make up that fruit. That's the way the Holy Spirit works in our lives. He comes into our lives, not just so that we, you know, sit around from Sunday to Sunday and practice our shout or practice our praise and worship or wait until we get into the sanctuary for service. The Holy Spirit works with us and walks with us each and every day of our lives so that every situation that you and I encounter, everything that you and I do, everything that we come across and come against, he helps us with it. That is the term parakletos, which I shared with you at the beginning of this study. When Jesus said, uh, I'm going to send you the comforter or the parakletos, I'm going to send you the one who comes and helps, others pronounce it parakletos, uh, who comes and helps you in all aspects of your lives. That's what that Greek word means. One who comes and helps, works besides us, comes alongside and helps us with the burdens, with the toils, with the challenges of life. So the Holy Spirit does all of these things so that we become fruitful. And that's why, interestingly enough, just like there are nine gifts, there are also nine fruits of the Spirit. And it reads, the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the things that happen when God is able to have his way in the lives of believers. Amen. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 12. We're going to share, and I want to talk with you about three of the fruit on, I'm sorry, three, three of the gifts on today. And just that's just for time's sake. Number one is the word of wisdom. Uh, from the NIV text, it said, message of wisdom. Uh, I was raised on King James, and while I use and encourage the use of some of these other versions, uh, just allow me, if you will, uh, the latitude to share in as the Spirit leads me. The word of wisdom and the word of knowledge are closely related. However, they are listed separately in the scriptures. Paul writes them out separately because there is a difference. Wisdom means understanding and knowing how to properly apply knowledge. It's also a term that uh, people use in past generations, common sense or mother wit. Wisdom is knowing how to apply the knowledge that we may have. It's one thing to gain knowledge. It's one thing to learn, to study. Uh, I have friends who have matriculated, you know, through every branch of academia possible. Some have wisdom because you would never know how blessed they are and how wise they are and how much they know. It comes up in little bits and pieces and conversations, but they don't just put it out there as if, hey, you know, I'm, I'm the brainiac. But then you have others who have great knowledge but little wisdom because they do not know how to use and how to apply it in a way that's both useful and even palatable to others. God gives us wisdom. The wisdom of God comes directly through the presence 
and indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And with the word of wisdom, we know how to use the understanding and the knowledge that God shares with us. The word of wisdom can be applied to the life-changing decisions, which allows us to do as God would have us to do. Lord, what is it? What's your will for my life? Give me the wisdom to choose, to understand, to do the things that you would have me to do so that my life continues in a positive course. That is what wisdom is about. Wisdom is the principal thing. Remember, that's what uh, Solomon wrote in Proverbs, third chapter. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all of your getting, get an understanding. When we learn how to trust God, how to seek God for wisdom, we don't rely on popular opinion. We're not swayed by what we see on the internet, on social media. We're not swayed by what popular uh, people or, or, or celebrities want to do. You know, if you see someone uh, wearing a particular color, oh, I got to get that. That's that. What? Well, okay, that's one thing. But to see people acting in a particular way that's not in accordance with the word of God, in accordance to the will of God, and then trying to emulate that, well, if they do it, it's okay. No. Wisdom teaches us how to please God. Wisdom teaches us how to be our own person, how to let the individuality which God has given each and every one of us shine through. Amen? Amen. When we, when we, when we keep God first, all these other things fall into place. The gift of wisdom enables us and empowers us uh, to deal with the challenges of life. And in James, the first chapter and the fifth verse, we're told that if you don't have wisdom, understand there are some people who will act like the gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, it's some mystical, spooky kind of thing. Uh, it, that's not God. God deals in light, God deals in brightness, God deals in enlightening and teaching his people. Remember, I shared with you last time how the Bible says, Paul writes uh, three specific times, I would not have you to be ignorant, or I would not have you to not understand or not know certain things. That's how he even begins 1 Corinthians 12. He, I, he doesn't want us to be in the dark. God wants us to know. So he's always sharing his word. There was a time, and I'll say that this before I read the scripture. There was a time when certain things in the Bible were basically taboo. Uh, you didn't study. You didn't read. I was told when I first started in ministry. In fact, when I first started as a Sunday school teacher in the, in the early 80s, you don't read or, or, or try to teach. You can read it, but don't try to teach the book of Revelation. But as we have moved into fully realizing that we are in these days and times and that it is necessary for us as a church, us as believers to know what the spirit is saying, to be forewarned and forearmed with the word of God. If God didn't want us to know it, he wouldn't have put it in the book. He would not have included it in the Bible. So do not allow anyone to keep you in the dark saying, I'll read and interpret and I'll tell you what the Bible says. No, God will give us the wisdom to discern and to understand the scripture. And if we don't understand, if we're not able to fully comprehend, that's what pastors, teachers, evangelists, ministers, and other prognosticators of the gospel are for. We are to share the understanding that God gives to us. Amen? If you don't have wisdom, if you feel like you need wisdom, and all of us do, all of us do, that should be a daily prayer in this day and age. 2022 has been such a year, as has 2021, 2020, 2019, you name it, it has been. And it didn't just start, but we need the wisdom of God to be able to get through, to understand, and to make the right choices in our lives. James 1 and 5, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. And it will, it will, it not it might, not he'll have to get back to you, not uh, God will evaluate your situation and, and, and determine how much wisdom you need. No, 
he will give it to us generously. God will overflow our minds and our hearts with the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Let's keep going. The second gift that we're going to share today is the word of knowledge. Now, knowledge is applied is 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 applied wisdom uh if if that makes sense knowledge is what you need in order to exercise with wisdom that's what i was trying to say and so the word of knowledge is god's way of helping us in our everyday lives now for some people and i've seen this happen god will give us insight through a man or woman of god that's legitimate he will give insight but you also want to be careful and make sure that this person is powered by the Holy Spirit. There are those who still deal with tarot cards, Ouija boards, things of, of that nature, uh, psychics. Psychic people, people who deal with psychics or, or those who are, call themselves psychic or those who go through the tarot cards or those who go through the Ouija boards, they get their information, which might be useful might even be accurate to a point, but that doesn't come from God. It comes through the enemy because those are demonic spirits, divination, witchcraft. The Bible talks about that in the Old Testament as well as in the New. Those who deal in witchcraft are going to hell. That's very simple. The Bible says, do not dabble in witchcraft. If you need to know God's plan for your life. There's a song out there, uh, uh, and, I, and I love it. I think Donald Lawrence uh, and his, 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 his singers did that. If you want to know God's plan for your life, get in the spirit and let the Lord speak to you and he will give you the knowledge. And it doesn't always have to come through a, a, a man or woman of God. Sometimes God will share that knowledge through dreams, through visions, through, through incidences, through uh, uh, things that only God could orchestrate so that we know what is going on. The word of knowledge is God's way of helping us with our everyday situation in life. Everything that concerns you and I concerns God. Remember that. Everything that concerns you and I, it is of concern to God. And God is omniscient. He knows everything. He knows all from there's no secret uh, hidden from God, from Genesis 1 and 1, this creation that we're enjoying now, all the way up until the end of the age into eternity, God knows everything. And so the word of knowledge is God's way of sharing with us the knowledge that we need to make the right choices, to have insight, to have understanding, and to be able to to make good choices. The word of knowledge uh, comes in various ways and it is applicable, if you will, to everyday life. One of the things that is, has been a challenge for many Christians, and I think we're in an age and a day now where that challenge is being addressed, is the idea that God belongs in the church, in the sanctuary, but when I get out here, Oh, you know, like I'm in my backyard or on the streets or in the, in the mall or in the grocery store or in my car. I'm on my own. No, that's not God. God is there with us and he wants to be a part of our everyday life. And there's nothing, nothing, nothing that we cannot ask him that he will not respond and lead us in the right way. He helps us in all kinds of ways. The word of knowledge, the Holy Spirit's gift of the word of knowledge is even applicable in school. Whether you're in uh, elementary school, middle school, high school, undergraduate, graduate level, vocational classes, whatever it is, the word of knowledge will help you to understand, to comprehend things that ordinarily you may or you and I may not be able to comprehend. The word of knowledge, and, and I'll, I, if I could just share this, um, part of my teacher certifications required that I'd had to take a major state test twice. And that test took all day. Those of you who are teachers know what I'm talking about. 
And that certification test, it took all day. You took it for like three or four hours in the morning, took a lunch break, came back two or three hours in the afternoon. It was only through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. And I'm, I was one of those students and I still am. I enjoy tests because it, it, it gives me the opportunity to exercise my mind, to exercise the intellect that God has given me and to do the best I can by studying and remembering and putting into, into practice what I've learned. And, but a six, seven hour test, oh my God. And it was only through the presence of the Holy Spirit that I was able to ace those parts of the test that I just knew that they were gonna get me. That's the power of the word of knowledge. He is with us everywhere we go, even in the classroom. The word of knowledge is good for us to understand how to uh, solve specific problems, whether it's at work, in our homes, disputes, relationship issues, family issues, whatever. Word of knowledge enables us to know how to be, as, as the old saying go, goes, like oil on troubled waters. The word of knowledge will help us to remember things that we may have forgotten. Oh, where's my keys? Lord, you got to show me where I put my keys. And how many of you know, he'll show you exactly where you laid those keys. He'll help you with passwords. See, and, 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 and it seems like, oh, I didn't know he did. That is the power of God. And that is why the Holy Spirit is here with us. He is a part of every aspect of our lives. He also helps us to learn how or know how to properly witness the people who don't know Christ. We can't come at them uh, like Sunday morning. We can't come at them condemning everything that they're doing because that turns people off. They don't want to know or hear about a God that, you know, can't do this, can't do that, can't do this, can't do No. In Acts the eighth chapter, about the 26th verse, the Bible tells us how an angel of the Lord tells Philip to go in a particular direction. This is a word of knowledge go in a particular direction. He said, go south to a road. There was a desert place. He sees an Ethiopian eunuch. And this man was very important. He was uh, in charge of the uh, treasury or the money, the finance man for Queen Candace of Ethiopia. And here we see how the word of knowledge helped Philip to witness to this eunuch so that after reading and understanding the word of God and after God gave Philip what he needed to share and to preach and to teach to this man, uh, this eunuch says, hey, there's some water right there. I want to be baptized. I want to be a Christian. I believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Those are the kinds of things that God will give us the ability to do, the knowledge of uh, what to do, where to be, and there's no coincidences in Christ. Uh, he will place us where we need to be so that we can help build the kingdom of God through the power and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So it is very important to understand what the word of knowledge is about. It is the ability, in addition to all of the personal life things, to understand and interpret scripture properly in the way that God intended for us to do so. And we can only do that if we follow the admonition of the scripture in 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman who needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. The third uh, gift that we're going to talk about today, and this will be the final one that we'll deal with today, we'll pick it up with healing next week, is the gift of faith. Faith is critical to the life of the believer. And all of us have a measure of faith. All of us have some faith in order to be saved because it, 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 is, it is by faith that we accept Jesus Christ. Uh, Ephesians the second chapter tells us that we are saved by grace through faith. It is the gift of God, another gift, his grace. Not that anyone can boast. And so when we understand the need and the ability to grow our faith, uh, remember the disciples when Jesus was performing miracles and he was teaching and sharing with them, they said, Lord, increase our faith. 
This is what the Holy Spirit will do. He will increase. He will grow our faith. He will enable us to look over our lives and see how God has blessed. See how God has moved. See what God has done over and over throughout the years. And we're able to better trust him, better serve him, and better believe in him. The gift of faith is, well, let me say this first. Faith, it's important to understand what faith is. Hebrews 11 and 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And as I said, we're saved from sin and damnation through our faith in Jesus Christ. John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever, whoever believes on him, believes on him, should not perish but have everlasting life. And then again in Romans the 10th chapter, we're told that we're uh, saved because we believe in our hearts and we confess with our mouths. That is faith. We confess the Lord Jesus and we are saved. We can do all things when we have the power and the strength of our faith that continues to grow. Faith is necessary even just to approach God. Hebrews 11 and 6, without faith it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So when we have real, true, working, bona fide, walk by faith, not by sight faith, it is not always easy. Because it's understanding that when we are walking by faith, we don't see what the outcome is going to be. We may not even see where our next footstep is going to be. But God does, and he wants us to trust him. That's the power and strength of our faith relationship with him. When we have that faith relationship with God through Jesus Christ, our faith enables us to move mountains. Remember, Jesus said, if you have the faith of a grain of mustard seed, you can tell this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea. We can overcome any obstacle. We can overcome any challenge with faith. Faith requires belief in God and faith, let me throw this in for free, James the second chapter, requires work. If we truly believe, we'll live and work and move in accordance. Uh, let me just share with you about Abraham. Romans the fourth chapter, and you can read this in your leisure, but Romans the fourth chapter talks about how Abraham, and I'm going to read this to you uh, from the New Living Translation. Abraham was humanly speaking, the founder of the Jewish nation. What did he discover about being made right with God? If his good deeds, because Abraham was a good, a good man when he was Abram and his wife was Sarai, they were good people. But if his good deeds had made him acceptable to God, he would have had something to boast about. But that wasn't God's way. Verse three, for the scriptures tell us Abraham believed God. And God counted him as righteous because of his faith. And, and it was Abraham's ability to believe and trust God that he would have a son. Remember, if you will, God came to Abraham uh, when Abraham was about 75 years old. Sarah was about 65. And he told him, you're going to have a child. Now, they had been married all these years. They had not had children. But... At 75, in those days, and Abraham lived into his, into his uh, to be about 175, with all that, you know, longevity, things were probably a little different then. So they weren't too worried. But as time passed, and the Bible says that Abraham continued to believe God, his faith grew stronger, even though, even though his body was aging. He was becoming weaker and weaker until finally at about a hundred years old when his body, as he figured he was good as dead. That's, that's what the Bible says in Romans, the fourth chapter and the 19th verse. Abraham's faith did not weaken, even though at about a hundred years of age, he figured his body was as good as dead. And so was Sarah's womb. But Abraham, verse 20, never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger. And in this, he brought glory to God. 
The gift of faith enables us to glorify God in all of our life situations. The gift of faith enables us to believe God and then to work and exercise our lives in such a way that is in accordance with that faith. Abraham and Sarah believed God. They acted in accordance with their faith. And as a result, Sarah conceived Isaac. Abraham was almost 100. She was 90. That is how faith works. And then the Bible tells us that in verse 23, Romans 4 and 23, that because of Abraham's, I'm sorry, in verse 22, and because of Abraham's faith, Romans 4 and 22, God counted him as righteous. And when God counted him as righteous, it wasn't just for his benefit. It wasn't just for Abraham's benefit. It was recorded going into verse 24, Romans 4 and 24. It was recorded for our benefit too, assuring us that God would also count us as righteousness if we believe in him. Hallelujah. The one who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. I'm going to stop there. We're going to pick up and study the next three next week. But it's so important, church, so important, brothers and sisters, that we understand that the Holy Spirit is working in us and through us, and he has gifted us for the times that we're living in. We're living in difficult times. We are living in strange times. But God put us here because he built us and is willing to more than equip us for the challenges that you and I are going to face. Amen. Glory to God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for your blessings. Thank you for who you are in our lives. Thank you for making ways for us as your people. We need you now, Lord, as never before. Bless us, guide us, strengthen us, help us, Father, through all the challenges that we face. We thank you because you promised to walk with us and talk with us and to keep us as your own, as God, our Emmanuel, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We thank you. We thank you for all that you've done. And we ask that you will bless your people, strengthen those who are weak, comfort those who are bereaved and going through. Be with those and, and, and share your grace, especially on those who are sick and afflicted, those who are incarcerated. Father, we need you in every aspect of our lives. Bless us now. And we are ever so mindful to give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This is your latest from FBC. Come hear what the Holy Spirit is saying through the vessels of First Baptist Church. Sundays at 9 a.m., we are in our live services. Every Wednesday at noon, get a word to inspire, educate, and help you grow during our midweek Bible class. And at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays, join us for our enrichment class, a.k.a. Sunday School, via teleconference, where we will take time to break down the key aspects of the Word of God so you can understand this great life we live as Christians. And you can stream our services and Bible class via our social platforms. So invite a friend, a loved one, and get inspired, educated, and elevated in the Word of God and worship at FBC. We are asking all members to assist by making a commitment to donate weekly, bi-weekly, or even monthly. All donations will go into our debt-free fund to liquidate our mortgage. If you have further questions, you may speak with any member of our finance ministry or our debt-free ministry. The food pantry is open on Fridays from 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. for drive through pickup. We are currently looking for extra hands to assist with lifting boxes. Please contact the ministry leaders if you are available. Thanks to all who assist weekly, and God bless. For all of these announcements and more, you can log on to our website to keep up with ministry, outreach, and other community information. We encourage not just for you, but for you to have your family and friends go to our social media platforms. Hit those like and subscribe buttons so you can get notified every time we are live. If you would like to be a blessing to First Baptist Church, it's easy via our giving platform. We encourage you to email or call us with your prayers reports because we know God is still manifesting his promises, even in a pandemic. 
God bless. And this is your latest from FBC.